Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate some simple Thanksgiving, November, fall themed decorative sugar cookies. So these are turkeys. They're just a simple sugar cookie recipe and they're cooled out of, after coming out of the oven. And now I'm going and doing the outline in royal icing. And the outline you want a little thicker than you would uh, the flooding portion of the icing. So this is probably the consistency of just kind of a thin buttercream icing. So if you were to water down your buttercream a little bit to make it a little softer, that's about what I'm working with here to do this outline. Because you want it to be pretty sturdy so that when you go and fill it in with the softer, a little runnier royal icing to flood it with, that it actually holds shape and doesn't run off the edge. Now I'm going in and flooding this. So I've taken that same brown that I outlined it with and I put it in a bowl and added water. Now it's a little thicker than honey. So maybe molasses, um, just to give it something to compare to. And I'm just piping it on, roughly covering most of the cookie, and then taking that tool and moving it all around to make sure all the gaps are filled in. It dries nice and smooth. So even if it's not perfectly even when you're moving it around like that, it will settle on itself. And if you don't feel like it's settling fast enough, you can like shake the cookie a little bit or shake your cookie tray a little bit to kind of level it all back out. But What's funny is the tool that I'm using is just an old paintbrush that the bristle portion has broke off of. So there's no like wooden shards or anything. It didn't break like that. Just a little metal clasp that holds the bristles in came off. So now it's just rounded on both sides. And I love it to fill in cookies. A lot of cookie videos I see people using like little cake testers and something kind of sharp to fill that in. I don't know. I just don't like that. I always prefer the dulled edge. Um, of this old paintbrush to do the flooding with. So that's what I use, that's what I'm comfortable with. I've been using it for years. And so yeah, again, you're just gonna see me keep moving that icing around with that tool, making sure there's no holes or air bubbles until it looks nice and full and smooth. Okay, so now that my cookies are flooded, but they're still wet, you have to make sure they're still wet. You can't wait for these to dry to do this technique. I'm taking like a reddish burgundy color, an orange and a yellow, and I'm just drawing like an arch, almost like a rainbow, but you don't want the colors to touch on each cookie. And I'm only doing three. I think I do two in a little bit um, at a time because you, like again, it needs to be nice and wet. And that's just a cake tester I'm using, like a wire, any wire, toothpick would be fine. And I'm pulling where I want there to be feathers. So basically on the cookie itself, there are you know a scalloped edge to create feathers look. And so you're just following those lines and you're pulling just straight down and that gives you the effect of feathers. It will create, like I said, a line on the icing as you can see there as I'm dragging it through, but it kind of closes off as it dries and the flooding icing kind of goes together. So it doesn't look so separate. So I just keep doing that over and over again. And like I said, if you feel like your icing is drying too fast, just do one at a time. You don't have to do two to three cookies at a time if you feel like your icing is a little thicker and is drying too fast to do that. And you just keep doing this over and over again. It's a really quick technique, but it looks really nice on a cookie and it dries nice and smooth. The icing that you go and do those colors in, the, the reddish burgundy, the orange, the yellow, it needs to be a very similar consistency to the flooding icing. If it's too thick, it won't drag through correctly. So make sure that's somewhat similar to what you're using as your flooding background and consistency so that it gives you a nice smooth effect. And also, I forgot to mention, when I am pulling through and then I immediately take that cake tester and run it between my 
pointer finger and thumb on my left hand. The reason I'm doing that is because you don't want anything on that wire or toothpick when you go to drag it through. Any colors that may have stuck on it or icing that may have stuck on it from the previous run through will drag through on your brown flooding of the cookie in the background and will make it look chunky and it'll stick to it and it'll run the colors the wrong way. So I always just wipe it right between my fingers between each one and then just wipe my hand off with a paper towel. I mean, obviously you could wipe it on a paper towel. I just think this is out. This is faster and a little easier. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning off that every single time I run it through. And here I am piping on the little legs and little feet and that's with a thicker consistency orange just so that it stays in its place and holds shape. And you don't see me pipe the beak on but I use the same orange to pipe a little triangle where the beak would be. And then I also go back with that same burgundy red color and pipe on that little, that's what I'm doing now, I don't even know what it's called, but that little piece that hangs under the turkey's chin. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't zoom in better, but basically it's the same icing I use. It's a little thicker, holds shape, and looks cute. Let them dry overnight and use an edible ink marker to draw on the eye. Thanks!